Hello children, welcome back. How are you all? So must be doing good. So we are there on the third lecture related to machines. In the first we did the definitions and few terminologies related to machines. And in the second lecture we discussed about levers and its classes. So today in the third lecture we are going to discuss about the application of whatsoever concepts we have done. So, we are going to work on the numericals. Since you all are aware that we are following Selena Publishers, so I'll be quoting page numbers and question numbers related to the concepts. Right? So, today we are going to work on numericals given on page number 59. So, uh, the first numerical I would love to try. According to the first numerical, a crowbar of length 120 centimeter. First of all, we need to draw a crowbar. See, beta, it's not a compulsion every time to draw the diagram until and unless they ask you. But the thing is, being a science student, your preference should always be to draw the diagram so that things are clear to you. It's not for the others, it's for you, right? So I have drawn a crowbar and they have given the total length is 120 centimeters, right? has its fulcrum situated at a distance of. So, this is representing fulcrum and it is at a distance of 20 centimeters. Load is at a distance of 20 centimeters from the fulcrum. So, what they are asking you? They are asking you calculate the mechanical advantage of the crowbar. So, if this is total 120 centimeters, this is 20 centimeter. I mean to say load arm. It means F at arm must be 100 centimeters. So, I am going to now write down whatsoever is given. They have given load arm is 20 centimeters, effort arm is 100 centimeters and now they are asking you to find out mechanical advantage. As we have done in our previous lecture that mechanical advantage is given by a ratio of effort arm to load arm, right? So, we will substitute the values centimeters centimeters this will cancel out so we have again done this concept in our previous lecture that mechanical advantage does not have any unit so here on calculation we get answer to be five so now we are going to proceed with one more question let it be question number two so according to second question a pair of scissors they are telling you pair of scissors pair of scissors right pair of scissors has a blade 15 centimeter long so the blades are 15 centimeter long this is representing your fulcrum the rivet right the pin the nail joining the two blades right so that is given to be 15 centimeter while its handles are 7.5 centimeter so, where you are going to apply effort is at a distance of 7.5 centimeters. What is the mechanical advantage? Again, in this question, they have given you load arm to be 15 centimeters, effort arm to be 7.5 centimeters, and again, they are asking you mechanical advantage. So, again, we are aware about the formula that mechanical advantage is given by effort arm to load arm right so if we substitute the values we'll be getting 7.5 upon 15 right and it comes out to be half which means 0 0.5 again no units since mechanical advantage is a pure ratio again for your convenience i'm going to proceed with one more example <laughs> let it be question number six so, children, as your assignment, you must try all the numericals given in exercise, right? Uh, I'll be sending you separate uh, instructions regarding to the questions I'll, after this uh, video, right? Again, they have given a pair of scissors. Again, pair of scissors is used to cut a piece of cloth. Cloth is going to act as a load. So, here we are going to put the load, right? by keeping it at a distance of 8 cm from its rivet. I hope you understand rivet as I told you in my previous question. Rivet means the fulcrum 
and it is at a distance of 8 cm right and uh, an effort of 10 kgf so here they have given you effort is 10 kgf i think i need to mark a line so that you understand where we have finished with uh, let it be with a separate marker right so that you understand where we are finishing it right so an effort of 10 kgf is applied so you remember effort is a force right so effort is being applied at a distance of 2 cm from the rivet so fingers they are at a distance of 2 cm it means the effort arm effort arm is 2 cm effort arm is given to be 2 cm and they have given load arm 8 cm and now they are asking you to find out mechanical advantage right so mechanical advantage as we know from the previous questions effort arm to load arm if you substitute you will be getting 2 by 8 and on calculation it comes out to be 1 by 4 that is 0 0.25 right and uh, <clears throat> next they are asking you to find out load so I am just marking it here only load so according to principle of levers we have load into load arm is equal to effort into effort arm right and uh, load we need to find out load arm is given to be 8 effort is 10 and effort arm is 2 right so load it comes out to be 10 into 2 by 8 right so it comes out to be on calculation it comes out to be 5 by 2 which is 2.5 kgf since we are finding out force right so the force here is 2.5 kgf now in the next part that is b part they are asking you now in the b part they are asking you whether the machine is acting as a force multiplier or it is helping you to gain speed now since we know here mechanical advantage is less than 1 and we have done in our concepts whenever mechanical advantage is less than 1 machine helps you to gain speed right so here the machine is helping you to multiply speed it is help it is acting as a speed multiplier now next we are going to start with the next section of the chapter that is pulley so what is a pulley a pulley is a wheel on an axle or shaft that is designed to support movement and change of direction or to transmit force. A single pulley can be used in two ways. It can be used in two ways. It can be used as a single fixed pulley, can be used as a single fixed pulley or it can be used as a single movable pulley movable pulley right so let's see the difference between single fixed pulley and single movable pulley uh, first of all let's see the difference in the diagram what is the basic difference so for single fixed pulley this is the rigid support where we are going to hang right this is the hook and this is how the pulley will be drawn this rim is there axle is there and here the rope is there and here we are going to hang the load that will be in downward direction right and effort also you are going to apply in the downward direction and force of tension I hope you remember normal reaction and you were told in the class that whenever a body is lying on the surface the weight of the body act in downward direction and to counterbalance it an upward force acts and that is known as normal reaction but in the case of a thread rope string 
we always talk in terms of tension right and tension force always acts in upward direction so if effort is going to act in downward direction tension will be in upward direction same way load in downward direction tension will be in upward direction now let's see the difference between the two in the form of diagram the first one i have already drawn so this is the second diagram that is single movable pulley so let's see what is the difference here you are going to hang the load right load will be in downward direction and here effort will be applied in upward direction now remember whether up effort is in convenient direction means effort is acting in downward direction or it is in inconvenient direction that is effort is is in upward direction tension always always acts in upward direction don't think that since one of the force is acting in upward direction to counterbalance it the other force has to act in downward direction no just remember tension always acts in upward direction right so now let's see let's find out mechanical advantage related to single fix pulley so here we know that if we assume that the mass of the string is negligible and there is a negligible force of friction existing between the parts of the pulley and the axle then in the balanced position load will be balanced by one tension and effort will be balanced by one tension you can see from the diagram here right and mechanical advantage is given by ratio of load to effort which means tension by tension and we get here mechanical advantage 1 and uh, if mechanical advantage is 1 which type of machine it is acting it means it is in the convenient direction you are using machine to apply effort in convenient direction this is just an example when you are uh, you are uh, uh, you want to draw water from the well right using an axle and you are using so let me quote an example you must have gone to jalandhar and you must have seen that haveli right there you must have seen well while drawing water from well you always apply effort in downward direction so with this even your body weight is helping you to uh, apply force in downward direction right so here mechanical advantage is one now let's see here the load is being now is being balanced by two tensions right can you see here this single load is there and that is being balanced by two tensions so here load will be 2t and effort is t right so mechanical advantage will be given by 2t upon t which is equal to t right so here mechanical advantage is greater than 1 so it must be acting as a machine which helps you to multiply your force right so here your machine is acting as a force multiplier since it is greater than 1 now let's talk about the mechanical advantage uh, sorry mechanical advantage we have done now let's talk about velocity ratio velocity ratio is given by distance moved by effort to distance moved by load and if i suppose that d is the distance moved on application of force in the downward direction when you are applying effort and d is the distance moved by this string so when you are pulling it distance has to be moved by the load as well so since it is being supported single string is there right so same distance will be covered by the string so it comes out to be velocity ratio is going to be 1 but here velocity ratio again is given by distance upon distance of effort to distance moved by load but if you check out here here you know what the distance that uh, the uh, when the free end of a string is pulled up by the effort through a distance d, d the load is raised through a distance d by 2 now you may question how come it possible d by 2 the thing is here load is being supported by two strings right so if d distance is being moved by effort d by 2 and d by 2 will be moved by load right so here this is distance d and this will be d by 2 and d by 2 right so here velocity ratio it will come out to be 2 fine so this is the difference between your uh, single fix pulley and single movable pulley now the thing is this is a an 
ideal situation an ideal situation as i introduced in the beginning that let us suppose that mass is stringless uh, the the string is sorry the string is massless and there is no force of friction existing